What if something happens that no one's been talking about? The media are always giving different predictions, interest rates are going up or they're going down. They love it because the contrast sells. But what if the hard times we're going through now is actually just the new norm? This scenario is going to be confronting for many because times are tough. People are really hurting and the prospect that this economic environment could play out for longer feels unbearable for a lot of borrowers. So prior to the August interest rate announcement, this is what I'm gonna talk about in this video. Before I start, I just wanna make it clear that I'm not an economist or a property expert or anything like that. I'm a mortgage broker that's been in business for over 13 years. The reason I do these videos is because there is a lot of stuff that isn't being said. For example, in my opinion, a lot of people have too much debt and it's one sign of the growing divide between the rich and the poor. Anyway, I respect people with different opinions, so leave your comments below so long as they're respectful. So, is this the new norm? I'm just going to quickly explain the debt cycle and how it applies to right now as I see it and what role the RBA plays. At the bottom of a cycle, interest rates are low because the RBA reduced interest rates to stimulate the economy. An important assumption to make here is that whenever money is borrowed, it's created. This applies to both government borrowing and personal borrowing when you take out a home loan, for example. So more money is borrowed or created and because the interest rates are cheap, businesses can then go and invest and turn a profit. As more money is borrowed, then more gets spent, which means more gets earned because one person's spending is another person's earnings. This is important because the overall amount of money in the system gets inflated. It's one of the main reasons inflation increases. As borrowing increases, interest rates start going up. This is because more borrowers are taking bigger risks now to get those returns. As rates increase, people start focusing on repaying debt. Remember, when debt is taken out, then it is creating money in the system. When it gets paid back, the money disappears from the system. This means incomes get constrained, which means that employers have to lay off staff. As unemployment goes up high enough, the economy will enter a recession or a downturn and the RBA begins to reduce interest rates to stimulate the economy again. Now I'm going to list a bunch of things that we've done as a nation to try and fix these things but have just made it worse. Interest rates were too low for too long. It created a massive spike in borrowing at both government and individual levels. This money creation has led to a sharp increase in inflation that we experienced. COVID stimulus spending, which remember is borrowing because the government have spent more than what they've earned. The jobs, jobs, jobs thing, this was popular pre-COVID with state and federal governments. A lot of people don't know that before the pandemic, there was a lot of spending, especially on infrastructure to create jobs. You can put the NDIS spending in the same bucket as this. So now I'm going to get to the point. Interest rates have gone up. The RBA have done the right thing in regard to that. For interest rates to come down meaningfully, you need a downturn or a recession. At the moment, our inflation rate is about 3.8%. The RBA's target is 2-3%. to So if you look at it from this point of view, the RBA are going to keep rates steady until inflation comes back into their target range of 2-3%. to My belief is very simple. Our country has created too many jobs with borrowed money. Just think of all the major infrastructure jobs going on everywhere. Think NDIS. We created a $40 billion industry from practically nothing inside a decade. If inflation needs to come down, then people need to stop spending. What will stop people spending is when they fear losing their job and not being able to get another job. This is important because this is where spending will fall off the cliff because if you fear not being able to earn income, you'll save as much as possible and spend the least amount possible. And spending needs to fall off a cliff because the supply side costs are increasing. Energy is not coming down. Anything we import may not come down because of global uncertainty. Stuff isn't coming down. I think that unemployment is going to be hard to get down, especially whilst our governments are spending so much. Time will tell, right now the unemployment rate is a tick over 4% with the long-term average pre-pandemic being around 5 or 6%. This is the argument that this is the new norm. At the start of 2022, we were meant to get back to normal after all the COVID stuff. 
I quickly came to the belief that this decade is going to see a lot of financial uncertainty. I say it every second video, the only thing that's certain is uncertainty. At the end of the day, you need to do what you can because the situation isn't going to improve anytime soon. If you have a home loan, at the end of this video, I'm going to share another video I did showing you how to pay your home loan off faster. It's not going to be one of those dodgy, you can pay your home loan off in five or 10 years videos either. It shows some basic things which you can do to get yourself literally hundreds of thousands of dollars ahead over the period of your loan. The truth is that there are easy strategies that you can combine so that they stack up and the savings compound over time. I'm putting together a program in my business to do this to help people avoid the debt trap and reduce their home loans as soon as possible. It'll be a paid program, but it isn't done yet. I need some guinea pigs first. If you wanna work with me free of charge to do this, then please let me know via email, which you can find on my channel page or my website. I'm only gonna be taking five clients on a month because otherwise I'm not gonna have the time. So just email to see if we can work together. Thanks for watching guys. Again, I love your comments. No keyboard warriors. A diverse range of opinions and beliefs really does make the channel better. Thanks guys, cheers.